tool or as a move tool, a scale tool, and a rotate tool. So I got these four right here. And these allow us to move our pieces around, uh, scale them up and down to make them bigger and smaller. Our rotate tool allows us to kind of spin pieces around in any direction we want. And then the select tool is exactly what it sounds like. It's just to select on different pieces and uh, allow us to kind of move them and stuff. A little more on the right of that, we have this little part piece here. This is how we insert parts or pieces into our game. We just kind of click on it and you can see a part has spawned in here. You can also click the little arrow below it to change what type of shape you want. So if you want like a sphere, a wedge, or a cylinder, uh, you can probably see how different shapes can come together to make buildings and stuff that we'll see later on in classes. But, uh, but yeah, so that's how we insert parts into our game. As well as to the right of that, we have the materials section where we can choose materials for it, as well as the colors, color wheel here that we can select colors for. And then finally, we have the play button here, which is how we test out our game. You see here, we press on that. Our little guy is going to spawn into our game and uh, we can kind of move around and stuff here. So we can, to move around, you're going to use W to go forward, S to go back, A to go to the left, and D to go to the right. So these are kind of how we move around in Roblox Studio. Zombie indeed. And if we want to jump, we can just press on the space bar here and that will make us jump. We can press stop when we're done. And it works the exact same way in the actual studio here itself when you're not playing. If you want to just kind of move around your environment here, you press W to go forward, S to go back, D to go to the right, and A to go to the left. So this is how we move around. And if we want to move our camera angle around, we just hold down our right mouse button and we can kind of drag around here. And that will allow us to move our camera angle. And you've got to put these two together to kind of move around your map and, and look at your different parts when we eventually start making them here in a second. Last but not least before we get started here, we should have an Explorer tab on the right side here, as well as a property section here. If you don't have either one of these, all you have to do is go to the View tab and then uh, make sure that properties and the Explorer are both highlighted here by just clicking on them. You can see it kind of goes a little gray box around it and they should pop up on the right side here. What is a zombie? A zombie is a undead human. <laughs> Everyone's so far so good though. Get a little bit of understanding for uh, for kind of what we have around the studio here. If you have any questions at any time, guys, feel free to ask. We're kind of just gonna keep going along until you guys have questions and then we can always stop and go back if something's confusing at all. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we need to set up a spawn location. So this is where our character is gonna start in our game. As soon as we start up our game, they're gonna spawn onto that platform uh, as a little like starting spot for them. And how we do this is we're going to go over to the Explorer on this right side over here. We're going to go to Workspace and we're going to click on this little plus next to Workspace here. When you start highlighting or like hovering over top of it, it should kind of appear right here. You click on that and then you're going to go down and select Spawn Location here. If you click on that, you should see a spawn location appear right in front of you here on your uh, on your base plate. So I'll do that again here. We go to workspace, click on the little plus next to workspace, and we go down, we select spawn location. So far, so good. Excuse me, where is the workspace? So the workspace should be, do you have the explorer on the right side over here? It says explore at the top. Do you have that or no? Uh, no. No? Okay, so all you have to do is go to the view tab at the top here. Right here. Yeah. And then just make sure that you have explorer and properties both highlighted here. And they should appear on the right side over here. Okay, thanks. No problem. Let me know when you have those and I'll show you how to do it again here. Y'all good to go? So we're gonna see workspace should be the very, very top of your Explorer. 
It says workspace with a little globe. You're going to click on the little plus next to it by hovering over top of it. And then you're going to go down and select on spawn location here. And then I'll appear right in front of you on your base plate here. I still can't find a spawn location. Did you find workspace? Yep. Okay, so when you hover over top of workspace, do you see the little plus next to it? Yeah. So click on that. And you should have this drop down bar appear, right? It should be the fifth thing on your drop down bar. It should say spawn location with like a little sun next to it. Yep, got it. But how can you place it down? You just click on it and it'll spawn in itself. Thanks. No problem. All right, so hopefully we both have a spawn location now here and we see if we go back to the home section and press play. Now we should spawn onto our spawn location here as we see here. But we have one problem here is when we run off of our spawn location, say we miss a jump and we land here, we're kind of just sitting on our base plate, right? So what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to be able to have our character die, they fall off. So what we have to do is we have to go out and get rid of this base plate here. So I think that's kind of allowing us not to fall. So how we do that is we go into our workspace. So if you have a little sideways arrow here next to your workspace, just click on that so it's uh, downward facing. If it's downward facing, you're already good. And you're gonna go and see base plate here. It should be the fourth thing uh, in, your, in your workspace here. It says base plate with a little block next to it. And there's a few things you can do with this. You can, once you selected it, it's blue here. You can either press backspace and you'll see that'll make it disappear. You can also press the delete. So the key says DEL. I still can't spawn it. All good, I'll show you again here. Do you have a Explorer over here, Kevin? Uh, I clicked on the spawn location, but nothing happened. It must have, sp all right, try and look around your screen here with your right mouse button. Or hold down your right mouse button and kind of drag around. It might have spawned somewhere not on your, like we're not right where you are. Can you see it anywhere? If you still can't see it, uh, what you can do is make sure your workspace is open here with the, so it's like downward facing arrow. Uh, do you see a, let me pull it in here. Do you see a spawn location in there? No. No, so it's, you probably misclicked or something because you should have a spawn location in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna take this again. So go to your workspace and click the little plus. And then just go down and click spawn location again. And it should appear kind of right in the middle of your screen if you're looking at the floor. Did it work that time? Um, still no. I double clicked and I clicked once, but still nothing happened. Can you uh, share your screen over here? Okay. Thank you very much. One second. Okay, yeah, so you have a spawn there. Uh, I don't know where it, oh, so you already, did you already get rid of your base plate? Where's your base plate? Oh, there's your base plate. What is going on here? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, look down at your base plate, wherever that is. Is that your base plate down there? So hold down your right mouse button and kind of, I think you pull up, no, you pull down and you should be looking at your base plate there. Are you able to look down at your uh, base plate there? So I think your uh, actual thing it looks like is somewhere over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, the spawn first off here, right click on that, then your explorer over here, right where I've highlighted over here. 
right click on that and press delete or just just click on it actually click on the spawn so it's blue and press your backspace key all right so that's gone now is this your base plate here that looks like a pretty small base plate now or did you already get rid of your base plate maybe that is your base plate uh do you want to share screens again yep sorry i oh, just got okay. on mute um, do you mind uh, going in closer to your, uh, your base plate there? Okay. Oops. Keep going, keep going. Is that your actual base plate? Yep. Oh, okay, keep going a little closer. So basically you can see like the little pegs. Keep going. A little closer. Okay, a little more out now. A little more out. <laughs> Sorry, a little too close. Uh, okay, now that you're there, now do the same thing. Go to workspace, a little plus, and spawn location. There you go. Yep, thanks. All right, so next step is you're gonna delete the base plate the same way you deleted that spawn location there. So just click on base plate there in your explorer. Oh, not spawn location. No, no, uh, press control and Z. There you go. Click on the base plate. And press backspace. There you go. So now you have a sp uh, like a floating spawn location. All right, do you mind uh, stop showing your screen now? Yep. Thank you very much. Perfect. All right. Ooh. Oh dear. What is going on here? What in the middle? There we go. All right. So again, we just go here. We press backspace to delete it. And now we have a floating spawn location. Now we can see when we press play that we should be able to just kind of hop off. And now we float down to our death here. We go poof. And we should spawn back up on our spawn location now. Just like that, perfect. So what we have to do next is we have to insert parts into our game or blocks into our game. So how we do that is again, we go back up to that top uh, we were looking at before with the part and we click on that and we should see the same thing. A part should spawn into our game here somewhere around your spawn location or wherever you're looking here. So as we see here, I have my first part and there's a few things we have to do with this part before it'll actually uh, be a functioning part of our game here. First, we have to use the move tool and position it wherever we want. So again, these arrows are gonna appear when we use the move tool. The green arrows allow us to move up and down and the blue and red arrows allow you to move uh, forward and back and side to side. So we can kind of position this wherever we like, wherever we want our first jump to go to. I'm gonna make mine around there probably. And then we can also use the scale tool to make it as big as we'd like. So I'm gonna make mine a little bit of a wider first jump here. As you see there, I have my first step. Again, if you want to rotate it, maybe you want to spin it around or uh, I don't know, flip it up or something like that. Whatever you'd like, you can kind of just mess around with that and you should have uh, one piece in there. So we'll give you a couple minutes to kind of get your first piece into the gate and scale it out as much as you'd like. And then we will continue on here. You got a question? Put a zombie? Ah, you can put a zombie from the toolbox over here. Those are things we'll learn kind of later on. But for now, we got to get a, got to get our Oscar course working first. Do you guys both have a, a good looking block that you like? Ooh. 
One issue we're going to see with this block, however, when we play this, you'll see it kind of drops out of the sky and disappears. So there's stuff we have to do with this block to make it work here. First thing, once we select our block, our first block here, we're going to see the property section appears down here for that block. So we can see properties part, which is what it is. It's a part and its name is still part because we haven't changed that yet. So it's saying this is the properties of this item here. And we can see uh, in our properties, this everything in here is basically what makes this block kind of what it is, what it looks like, uh, what it's shaped, where it's positioned, all that good stuff. So we can see at the very top here, we have appearance. So that has brick color. As we can see here, we can kind of go through any of these colors and we can see the color of the block will change depending on what we pick. So I'll go, I'll pick a nice little red color here. Uh, you can also use uh, just color here to change the color. So we can see we have like millions of different colors we can choose from here as opposed to just that little color wheel. But again, I'm just gonna use that really red color. Next up, we have material here. So you can choose any material you like. My favorite one is a neon one. It kind of adds a nice little glow to your pieces. But if you want to kind of see a little demo of all the materials, you can also go to the top here and it'll kind of give you a little square image of what sort of texture uh, that material is. But again, we can choose it in the property section with that little drop down bar. Next up, we have reflectance and transparency. So these two values range from zero to one, zero being completely opaque and not reflective at all, to one, which is fully reflective as well as uh, fully transparent. So we can see it kind of starts becoming more and more invisible until it's actually fully invisible here. In the next section down here, we have the name. So we want to name all of our parts if possible, because when we get into coding and stuff later, it's going to be a lot easier uh, to work with your pieces if they're all individually named and you can kind of call them individually. So I'm just going to call mine block one, because it's my first block, and, uh, and move on with that. And then finally, the one thing we have to do right now is we have to make sure we anchor our block. This is the most important part of it all, because if we don't anchor our block by checking off this box here, It'll just fall to the sky, kind of like you saw it do earlier, and uh, and we'll we'll lose that block. It's not going to be there anymore. But if we see when we play now, that block should stay in the sky, like it does there, and we can just jump to it here. Need help? What's up? Well, I I can't get to the neon part, but I did spawn a part. But I don't know what to like. So select your part, the one you made. Yeah. Is it a is it the right is it the size you want stuff and in the position you want? Yeah, I guess. Perfect. All right. So when we click on the part, do you see the properties of that part show up in the bottom right? Yeah. There's Our, the color right. and. Yep. So we uh, you can select a brick color by clicking on that little box and picking any color you want. Yeah, but how did you make it like neon? Yeah. So right below that, we see material here. And it's a little drop down bar. So this started on plastic, I believe. Is this starting, uh, is this starting material? Or something like that. But we can choose any of these materials we want. So I just went in here and I scrolled down to neon. And that what's what made it kind of glow. So it's just one of the materials you can choose from. Make it yeah. long. Switched it to neon, but it just made it a bit red, but not anything else. So did you choose the color really red? Because depending on what color you choose, is depending on how much it'll really glow. So I it's just really red. Bright red. Yeah, and then it's not too much of a glow. It's just kind of like a little glow you can see on it. But how did you make it like shine? Oh, that's just the neon material. I did click on that too. So it says neon right now, down here? Yeah. Then it probably glows as much as it can glow on your on your thing here. The closer you get, you can see the less it glows as well. It's kind of just like a, it's more of an effect than anything. It may also be more kind of vibrant when you actually play your game, uh, like once you publish it and stuff. And we'll kind of see that later on. All right. 
So now that we have our first part here, and we did you guys anchor your parts? Make sure we go in here and we anchor our parts. This is very important. So this is unchecked to start. We just got to scroll down in our properties and make sure we click on that anchored piece here. And that will keep our piece in the sky. All right, so now that we have a piece we like and we have an anchor and all that stuff. Instead of having to go to a new part and doing all the steps we just did over again, we have a color and stuff we like, material we like. Uh, it's already anchored, all that good stuff. We can simply duplicate the part. And how we do that, there's a couple ways we can do it. We select the part. We can see it's selected uh, in blue here as well as in the properties. It is block one. We can press Control and D down at the same time, and you'll see a second block one here has appeared. So we can go in there and rename it and move it to wherever we like. So I'm just gonna drag mine out a little bit here. Uh, another way we can duplicate it is simply going to our Explorer here, uh, having it selected and right clicking on it and pressing duplicate. And that will also duplicate the part here. And again, we'd have to go in here and rename that part as well, just so they're all unique names. And that can give us a few pieces here. So we'll give you guys a little bit of time to kind of get that going and then we'll continue on to checkpoints here, which is where our obstacle course really starts coming along. So as we see, since we duplicated these parts, they're gonna keep all the same properties. Oop, I just totally fell. Uh, they're gonna keep all the same properties as the part you duplicated. So since we anchored the first one, these will also be anchored in the sky and we shouldn't have any issues with them. Like so. Just a couple minutes to kind of get a couple pieces in here and then we'll continue on to the next part. Are you guys all good to go? Get some yeses or noes in the chat. I'm gonna assume you guys are ready to go since don't say anything here. So our next step here, guys, is we have to make a, what's called a checkpoint. So a checkpoint uh, basically allows us, so um, if you die kind of halfway through or past another checkpoint, you're not gonna go all the way back to the start. You're gonna go to the last checkpoint you reached. So if we had a checkpoint here and we went jump, jump, die, we would go back to the start 
But if we went jump, 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 made this checkpoint and then died, we would go back to that checkpoint right there. So that's kind of the logic behind checkpoints. And that's what we're going to implement into our game right now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go out and uh, add another spawn location into our game. So first I'm going to color code this just so I can kind of see this was my starting location. Uh, you can do it just like blocks, you just click on it and click a brick color. But again, you don't have to do this. It's just kind of if you'd like to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the workspaces again with the little plus. Yeah, we're going to go down and click on spawn location here. And you'll see another spawn that's going to spawn into our game here. And we can kind of just move this over to the other side of where we want it. And it can stay there. So now we have two spawners here. We'll give you guys a second to kind of get that going. And um, we're going to implement something called teams to kind of connect to these different spawn locations. And the logic kind of behind what we're going to be doing here is every single spawn location will kind of associate with uh, one team. And so when you step on the game, you'll be on the red team, for example. And if I go jump, jump, die, since I'm on the red team, I'm going to go back and spawn on the red team spawn point. But if I make it all the way here, uh, maybe this is like the blue team spawn point, I would then join the blue team. And if I died after that, I would go back to the blue team spawn point. So that's kind of the logic behind this. Did you both have spawn locations uh, set up here, a second spawn location? If you don't, feel free to speak up now because if we continue, you might get a little lost. I'm good. Good, perfect. Alrighty, so what we have to do here is we're gonna go to model at the top here. And we're gonna go across to the two gears here, the blue and the red gear that says service. If yours doesn't look exactly like this, you might also have two smaller gears in the top right, uh, both red and blue again. Uh, that might also be your service here. And then you're gonna go in and click on Teams and then insert. Give you guys a second to find that. Let me know when you guys get that good to go. Done. Perfect. Kevin, you good to go as well? Yep. Perfect. All right, guys. So now that we have that, you guys move around nicely. Um, so what we have to do now that we have that inserted, we'll see in the Explorer, if we go down a little bit, we now have a Teams folder here. So what we're going to do is the same sort of thing we did with the workspace. We're going to go down to Teams and click on the little plus next to it. And we're gonna insert a team at the top here with the little soccer ball. So when we click on that, we're gonna see a team should appear in the folder with the little soccer ball logo here. And we can click on that and the properties of that team should appear in the bottom right properties section. So with this, the first thing we need to do is we need to name our team here. So we can go in here and I'm gonna name mine start because I'm gonna kind of match this with uh, the starting location. You can name whatever you'd like, but whatever you name it is gonna show up in the top right of your screen to kind of indicate to the player what section of the game they're on. So I normally name mine like start, first checkpoint, second checkpoint, and so on. Uh, you can name it after like sections of your game, maybe it's like red section and so on. Play, you can play if you like. This is what we got so far. We haven't set it up yet, so we're actually spawning the other side, but it'll, it'll work by the time we're done here. So what we can do here now, so we have start, we, well, we named it, whatever you want to name it, and we need to choose a team color here. So you can choose any team color you like, but the important thing is that you remember what team color you chose. So I'm going to choose really red, and the reason for this is we have to match it to the team color of the spawner that we'll see in a second. So first go to the team, name your team and choose a team color. And then you're gonna go over to your first spawner. You're gonna click on it and the properties of that spawner should show up here. And we're just gonna scroll on down to the new section that says teams here. So we'll give you guys a second to get there and then we will continue on. Feel free to let me know when you're there though.
You guys all good? Got a team? Almost. Alrighty. Let me know in the chat when you guys are all good to go. Perfect. You all good too, Kevin? There? Yep. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to go down to the team section here in the properties of your spawn location. So you just select on that and scroll on down to the team section. And we're going to check off allow team change on touch. So let's make sure that box is checked. We're going to uncheck the neutral box. And we're gonna match the team color to the team color you chose uh, on your on your team there. So I chose really red. So I'm gonna make my team color really red as well. We can see with start, it's the exact same team color. So now this spawn location is matched up with this team color. I don't know why this went away. But... Yeah, so now we have this spawner kind of connected to this spawn location here. So now we have that. We need to do the exact same thing uh, with the other spawn location here. So I'll change this to, uh, I'll make it teal, I guess. And we're going to go to teams. We're going to add another team. We're going to change the name. First check point. And we need to choose a different unique color from the one we chose last time. So I'll choose the teal color. And then we're going to do the same thing with the spawn location with uh, the checking, unchecking, and then choosing the team color to be the same as it was last time here. So toothpaste, Ooh, I don't know what happened there. Yeah, we have toothpaste, make this color toothpaste. And now we have two teams and two matching spawn locations. And while you guys do that, I'll kind of show you what this does here so we can see we spawn on the first spawning uh, platform here. So we're on team start for the red team. And if we go jump and then we die, we should go back and spawn on the starting platform here, which we do. But if we go jump, 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 and make it here, you can see we then join the teal team here called first checkpoint. And then if we die after that, we should go back up and spawn on that teal platform. Like so. So I'll scroll down to show you guys kind of the three things again. These are the three you need to do for your teams or on your spawn location. Uh, allow team change on touch has to be checked, neutral unchecked, and team color has to match the team color of your team that you made earlier. And if you do that for both of them, or as many as you'd like, you can do this, you know, five, six, seven, eight times. Uh, as many as you'd like throughout your obstacle course. If you make it longer, you're going to want more checkpoints. Or if you want to make it harder, put less checkpoints, because then you have to go back further every time you die. But uh, all up to you. You can kind of customize it as you wish. But these are kind of the main... Basically, what we learned here is the main parts of making a basic obstacle course. And then when you guys are done with that, you can either continue on with your obstacle course here, or you can have, we got 10 minutes or so, so you can kind of just play around with your game if you'd like, or you can just keep adding on to your game and stuff. Uh, that also works too.
How's it going, guys? You guys got two spawn points working here? You guys both good? Not seeing anything in the chat here. <laughs> Do either one of you guys like to show your obstacle courses or you guys just want to kind of play around for a little bit here? guys so i'm not hearing any errors i'm hoping you guys have these done I'll give you guys about five minutes to kind of wrap up what we're going to be doing here this we only have five minutes here is we're going to get you guys to save your work and now we're going to do that we're going to go to file in the top left corner up here all right click on that so the very very top left you see file click on that and go down to save to roblox as or save to file as, you would choose either one of these. Save to file as is gonna save it to your computer. Save to Roblox as is going to save it to your, uh, your Roblox account. So no matter what computer you're on next time, if you log into your account, you'll be able to get to your game. And we're just gonna click on that. And then we're gonna go down to the bottom left down here and press create new game, this blue text down here. And then you can name your game here. Uh, you can. How do you go on Roblox? Like, how do you open up Roblox Studio? So you're in Roblox Studio right now. So what you did today, like when you first opened up Roblox Studio and it came to that page where you pick, uh, picked the base plate, your game would be there. So I'll show you in one second kind of where it'd be, but we're gonna go to file, save to Roblox as, Create new game in the bottom left. And then you're gonna go ahead and name your game and press create and that'll save your game to your Rolex account. And while you do that, I'll show you kind of where it would show up here. So this is what happens when you first open up Roblox Studio. These are the base kind of base or templates and stuff that Roblox Studio gives you. So you have flap tray and base plate, all these other stuff. Um, if you go to my games on the left side, 
your game that you saved will be right there. So it'll be in the My Game section of uh, Roblox Studio's kind of opening screen here. And yeah, so you can go there from that save to Roblox as uh, save. But that's gonna pretty much finish up the demo class today. Uh, in future classes, we go on to kind of coding these, uh, making death blocks and like blocks you can fall through and stuff. Um, color coding so it'll change colors over time and stuff, make rainbows and all that good stuff. Um, and so on, yeah. So if you'd like to sign up for that, talk to your parents about talking to uh, Laura and she can kind of set you guys up with that. But if not, hope you guys had a good time today and I uh, hope to see you guys again. Do you guys have any questions before I finish up here? You don't have any questions, you're good to go whenever you'd like. All right, thank you. No problem, Terrence. Have a good day, bud.